Hi, this is Annie Manny with Paint the Moon Photoshop Actions, and today I'm going to show you a little bit about how to uh, touch up an image that might have some blemishes or, um, in this case, brownie crumbles. <laughs> uh, it's a really simple process, and there are several different tools that we can use to do this. I'm going to just show you a couple of them and show you which are my favorites for different instances. Uh, there are certain tools that are... Um, more appropriate for situations than others and I'll just walk you really quickly through a couple of those. I'm going to zoom in to this image so I can really see what I'm working with in this mess here. And you can see we just had some yummy chocolate in this image and a lot of times I think this is very charming but sometimes you want to get rid of that stuff or, or there's acne involved or something like that uh, very simply. Uh, we can remove those using uh, different tools in Photoshop. We have the clone tool, we have the patch tool, and the healing brush, and the spot healing brush. And I'll just show you very quickly uh, how those work a little bit. Uh, the first one I'm going to use is the clone tool, and this is kind of uh, the old standby. Uh, a lot of people uh, used to use this. I don't really touch the cloning tool that much anymore for this type of stuff. Uh, the cloning tool basically copies pixels from lo one location to another using your brush. Um, so you select a source. So I'm going to just show you here. I'm going to select my cloning tool here. And when cloning, I usually work on an, another layer. I'm going to create a blank layer here. And I'm going to make sure this says aligned sample and current and below. So it's going to be uh, using the, the image underneath my blank layer to sample from, but it's not going to be stamping on my actual image. So I can do this non-destructively and uh, lower the opacity when I'm done or just delete it if I don't like it. And so uh, with, the clone, with the clone tool, you can select the opacity of your brush that you're working with, and you can select the hardness of the brush edge, and, um, but the, other than that, you are the one who um, is responsible for making this blend with your image well. So it can be a little bit more challenging than the other healing tools to work with, but we'll, we'll quickly show you here. And so I'm going to um, start with... Uh, this little mess right down here and kind of show you how this works. I'm going to hit option and see my little crosshairs here. I want to select from this clean area right here and I am going to click option and click right there and you can see it's showing me kind of a preview of where what it's going to stamp and I stamp right there and it's dragging wherever I select it as my source it's copying it to the new to the new spot and you can see it's not blending really well there and so um, it's like I said it's not my favorite to work with anymore at least not for this type of a work um, let me show you what I prefer for this type of stuff I'm going to delete this layer and start over I'm going to create another new layer and I am going to choose my healing brush tool this time instead I'm going to click my right bracket to make my brush go up in size and I am going to make sure my source is sampled. And I'm going to hit current and below layer, so it's working with the layer below as well. And hit that as my source. It's another it's a option on the Mac Alt on the PC. Click as that as my source. Actually, I'm going to click down here and see if that works a little bit better. And go over that. And it's going to do the blending and everything for me. So it's, it works similar to the clone tool. You, you pick the source area, and then you pick where you're going to paint that source area. But instead of just outright copying it like the clone tool does, where it just copies the, the source area and copies the exact same thing over, the healing brush copies the texture of the source area and tries to match it um, in the tonal values and everything to where you're painting in your destination area. And it ma makes it the painting blend automatically. And so we picked our sources right here, and it's copying the same texture and the same tonal values and everything, so the lighting's kind of the same, and copies it over here and blends it in. And so I'm going to just keep clicking here. Um, and, I, and the key to working with these tools when you're working with either the cloning tool or the healing brush is to keep selecting new source points. So I, I, I'm constantly hitting my option or your alt if you're on a PC and clicking in new areas. So you're not copying the exact same texture over and over again or that's the 
a no-no. You quickly spot healing jobs when you see the same texture over and over again in an image. You can see that it, that, that work was done there. And so um, and as I get more detailed here, I'm going to select option and click, and you can just go in and out. You can see how nicely that Photoshop's doing a lot of the work for me. It makes it really easy, and I'm not having to do any of this blending myself. I have my brush set way too hard, so I should have set. You can select the hardness of your brush, and you want to really saw. You want the zero percent hardness when you're doing this, so it blends really well. I had mine way too high, so uh, lesson learned. And I did that on purpose so you could learn from my mistakes. And just click and heal, click and heal. And um, that's good enough for our purposes. Now, this is all on a new layer. So we didn't actually do that to our original image. And we can go back. And for some reason, if you want part of those brownie crumbs to show up, you can lower your opacity on that. That works better for if you're, I'm going to show you in a second how you do under eye circles. Um, if you're doing under eye circles, that works really well if you want to keep it natural looking. So you have a little bit of that shade left there, but not all the way. Uh, so you can see your results there and we're going to go up here and I will show you another one of my favorite tools the patch tool I use the patch tool for under eye circles all the time I'm going to select my background layer and I'm going to hit command J which makes a copy of that layer because I don't want to be destroying the pixels on my original image and I want to be able to lower opacity on it when I'm done if I want to and I'm going to select my patch tool here and so, I'm, like I said, I'm working on a copy of my background layer. And I'm just going to roughly select around the under eye circle area there and drag down to this clean area here and let go. And it works really, really nice and it's really easy. Um, you want to make sure that you're not like getting eyelashes or any of these little fine lines in there. And drag down and let it go. And you can see, and now that looks a little bit, she has naturally dark under eye circles. So I don't want to take that all the way. I want to leave it kind of natural looking. So I would take that down to about 50% or so. And you can see before and after, it just softens that up. It makes it look a little bit cleaner, but still gives a natural look like her. We don't want to make anybody look like a plastic doll. And now I'm going to show you the spot healing tool. And I'm going to... I'm, I'm happy with the, the work we did with the patch tool, so I'm going to hit Command-E, which is going to merge that layer into our background layer. Don't do that unless you're happy with what you've got because it's going to flatten those two layers together. So I hit Command-E, and you see it just merged right into my background layer. And we still have that uh, brownie crumb layer we did with the healing brush at the beginning. I'm just going to leave that there. And I'm working on my background layer here. And or actually, you know what? I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to hit Command-J to create a copy of that layer and work with that. And I am hit using my spot brush tool. And I'm clicking on that little spot there. And it just magically disappears. So it, the spot healing brush is is kind of it's exactly the same as a healing brush except for you don't pick the source that it's copying from. It kind of does the guessing work for you. So you paint on the area that you want fixed, and then Photoshop just does its magic and automatically picks the source that it's gonna that it's gonna use from nearby and and uses its own smarts. Photoshop is a very smart application and blends it automatically for you. And it's so it's perfect for things like little small scratches. It's it's very fast and it's usually very accurate and natural looking. So great for little small touch-ups and stuff. So if you're doing uh, small little blemishes and, and, and touch-up work, I would recommend um, trying out the spot healing brush first and, and working with that. I would recommend making a copy of your background layer to work on in case you want to lower the opacity and definitely so you don't actually destroy the pixels in your original layer. And then after that, if you've got some more serious fixes like the, um, the under eye circle, I almost always use the patch tool for that. Uh, we don't have that in Elements, but um, for Photoshop people.
Uh, which tool you use just depends on uh, what you're comfortable with. People have different favorites for different reasons and uh, the complexity of the touch-ups that you are doing. And so to finish that up, I liked all those adjustments. I flattened it, and I'm going to run through a quick little action from Fresh Wonderland 2 called Wham Bam. It's one of my new favorites. It works on all types of images. It's really fun. Nice, clean, processed look, and... There's really not a whole lot. I think I, this image does need to be warmed up. I might have done that first. Um, there is an add warmth layer in here, and I'll probably turn that all the way up on that. And I might work on the color on this separately. It's a little bit too cyan for my taste. But for a very quick edit, uh, there you go. So we've got the before, wham, bam, and after. And, uh, you know, there's a little bit more cleanup to do, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, you get the point, and hopefully you'll find some use in those healing tools, play around with them, and get to know which one you like best. And thank you very much for listening, and have a great day.